I'm going to be showing you my entire painting process for a digital painting. I'm also trying a new brush set in this video instead of using the presets on Procreate. So I'll be giving you my feedback and thoughts on the new brush set I just bought as well. The reason I wanted to get a new brush set is because the paintbrush settings they had on Procreate as presets weren't as painterly looking as I would have liked them to be. But I kept seeing Blue Satan's brush packs on Instagram and they are just so smooth. And they look very similar to my actual painting style for when I'm doing my traditional pieces. Um, I tend to do a lot of acrylics. So if you're kind of curious on my acrylic paintings, you can go back to some of my other videos. I really thought it would be a good buy if I bought them. It felt like a good game changer in, in my kind of style. Because they're, they're really similar to my painting style uh, traditionally. So definitely check out Blue Satan's Procreate brushes and their artwork. Uh, it's absolutely stunning, especially if you like digital portraits. But yeah, definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in. But anyway, the first thing I do in my paintings is the sketching stage. Everything always looks kind of funny at this point. It's pretty much just um, me mapping out where things are going to be going. It kind of looks strange because it's not the finished outcome, but we're pretty much just making sure that everything's anatomically correct or just kind of laying out a thought process because when I'm painting I usually change my ideas a lot you'll see that when I'm going through um, nothing's ever really set in stone and I like it that way I, I prefer it that way just because I can always change something it's more creative and you know I don't always it's sometimes when I'm painting it doesn't always go the direction that I'm looking for so I'll go back and that's the one nice thing about digital painting is that you can go back. I can literally just hit the back button or double tap on Procreate. But anyway, if you haven't noticed, we're at the stage where we're starting to add shades um, to the face. We're going to start adding depth because your eyes aren't just perfectly flat on your head. There's all these different shadows going on there. Also on your forehead, your cheekbones, you want to get the chin. Um, basically, the rule of thumb for your chin is... Um, to show that reflection on the jawline. So I just added in that little highlight or I was thinking about putting that highlight there. Uh, so definitely use a reference photo if you're not too familiar with anatomy or how the light hits the face. Because that's definitely important. If you don't have your shadows or highlights correct, the dimensional of the face is just going to look very odd. It's not going to look proportionate. Um, I mean, unless it's the style you're going for. I guess it could work depending on what kind of look you're you're looking at. But if you're doing a semi-realistic or more realistic portrait, you're going to want to know that. That's really important. So study that, practice it, memorize it because it's super important. All right, so the next step that we're going to be doing is adding the colors. So pretty much what I did was I did an overlay or layer. So just add a new layer on Procreate or whatever you're using and start adding in your colors. I'm playing around with colors right now. I don't really, I didn't really like the way it was looking, so I just added a blue overlay, um, because I didn't really like the, I liked the olive tones, but it wasn't really what I was going for, because if you haven't noticed already, this is going to be a mermaid. Um, happy mermaid, guys. Uh, I love that drawing challenge. It's so fun. Um, but basically, it wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to kind of appear like she was underwater or you had the idea that she was floating in water. Uh, so we're kind of just playing around with colors right now. I usually use brighter colors on the color wheel when I'm adding on an overlay because it looks more natural. If you do darker shades or more muted colors, it kind of looks um, really dark. You just have to play around with it a bit to see kind of what colors go good or what they kind of, how they match up with everything. Also, if you've noticed, I didn't use just one color on the face for the skin tone. It wasn't just straight orange that I used uh, for the overlay. I used bright pink, purple. I used green and blue in those eyes. I used a lot of purple by the, um, the bottom corners of the eyes just to add a little bit more depth and a little purple on the nose, pink, pink on the nose, pink on the cheeks, um, a little more orange by the corners of the lips. So you're gonna have to play around with that. 
You never want it to be just one shade. It doesn't give it a lot of dimension that way. But that's how I do it. You don't have to. Um, so now the final stage, we're adding highlights, which is my favorite part. I'm using a textured brush at this point. I don't really use the same smooth brush. I like to add a little of like a paint roller kind of effect. It looks more painterly that way. So I added it on the cheekbones, um, the, f the forehead, the chin, those corners by the lips, the neck. Anywhere pretty much the light is gonna hit first because it's it protrudes a little bit more. So you wanna add that depth. So after that's done, I started working on a little mermaid crown piece, which honestly I really regret getting rid of. As you'll see further on, I, I get rid of it. But I'm I kinda wish that I kept it. It's so cute. But I wasn't really happy with how the starfish was coming out. So I don't know guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I just kind of sad that I got rid of it. It was cute. But anyway, I was playing around with um, what I could add to make it look more mermaidy um, and less like a just, I don't know, just a regular person. So I added more bubbles. Um, again, with the bubbles, you don't want to add just one color. You kind of want them to be a little more translucent. I wanted a little bit more of a rainbowy color on them. But I didn't go overboard with that. Last step is adding it to Visco to see what kind of colors I liked best. And in the end, I couldn't decide between two different color schemes. So on Instagram, I posted two different ones. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to have both um, finished pieces up. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Bye!